I had to jump on there because I thought it was going to fly away. So when I was a kid, what I wanted to do more than anything in the world was become a spy. <laughs> then I decided what I really wanted more than anything to do was be a detective. You got to spy and solve mysteries. This was my homemade ID badge and my notebook, which was full of secret codes <laughs> and notes I had taken on our very unfortunate neighbors. I should probably say neighborhood. <laughs> When I was in high school, I discovered science, which totally stole my heart. And I also got to go on two archaeological digs where I discovered my true love of archaeology. So I went off to college, super excited to learn all about science and English. And it took me exactly half a semester to have two great epiphanies. The first was, whoa, these are not my people. <laughs> <laughs> and the second was, blood really is thicker than water, and what is in my blood? This is my great-grandmother, a lifetime artist. My grandmother and grandfather, both amazing artists. My grandmother at 89 is still making amazing art. My mom and her four siblings, known around here as the Cribs clan, they're all artists, um, some of them in multiple mediums. My father, a lifetime artist. My mom, a born artist, my biggest influence, and also my greatest cheerleader in life. So I was born into this beautiful bohemian atmosphere, given all the tools and materials you could possibly want. And as any kid would, I totally rebelled. <laughs> Thought, you know, being an artist is a terrible lifestyle choice <laughs> and something I will never do. And I really tried to resist. I got a lot of different jobs. Probably some of you know me from some of those jobs. <laughs> until I found this one technique, pot de verre. And I fell in love. Ancient in origins, shrouded in mystery. Most of the artists known for it had taken their secrets with them to the grave. I was immediately hooked. <laughs> so pot de verre in a nutshell, just to tell you so you understand what the process is. All the pieces you're going to see are created from this type of crushed and powdered glass called frit. I start by creating a model, pouring a mold. This is a mold with a very small amount of powdered glass applied to the surface. You can see the brown there. I use a very strange array of tools, many of them handmade. The sifters I use to apply the powdered glass the paint brushes to define and manipulate that powder, and the rest are tampers, which is just a fancy word for something to hit the glass with. And yes, that's how I get paid the big bucks for hitting glass with spoons. <laughs> this is a rough design that I've laid out, and then I'm defining it with the paintbrush. Once I'm finished with that, I start layering in thin layers of the coarser frit to create the thickness of the piece. After that is finished, it's fired in the kiln, and then it's time to break the piece out of the mold. Uh, this is when one of my favorite parts of the process is really exciting. It's sort of the reveal, and it's also where the archaeology comes back in. So once that's broken out, it's just a matter of cleaning it and cold working it to bring out its true colors. This is some of my really early notebooks. It took me almost a year of sort of experiments and failures to get any kind of success. Today, my notebooks don't look quite as dreamy after 15 years of this, um, but they serve a really important function of my work. This is where the science comes back in and really the spying and detective work because <laughs> I'm in a constant state of sort of experimenting and failing sometimes, and discovering the process as I go along. A quick overview of past work. This is a collaboration I did with my mother. So I did the vessel on top. She did the mosaic on the bottom. These first pieces were all about symmetry, trying to create perfection through design. I was carving into the surface of my model to create an inlay. 
I'd never been able to use the powders successfully, and when I finally was able to, it opened up a whole new world of possibilities. I could get subtle textures, <coughs> patterns and color variations that weren't possible before, as well as creating what seemed surfaces that seemed more like stone or metal, ceramic, leather, or combinations of those. So after being super serious in my mid-20s, I decided it was time to play a little bit. These pieces were inspired by working with my daughter, working, playing with my daughter, stacking up blocks, pushing them over. Um, I think, you know, it's very common for us to have, you know, we're moms, we have jobs, we have stuff at home, and we're all sort of striving to find balance in our lives. These were also a really great playground for me to try out lots of different colors and techniques. And through their evolution, I started to discover the relationships that the shapes took on by being placed next to each other. More and more, though, I kept looking back to nature, my constant question always being, is there anything more important than our home, the Earth? I would look to the tiniest things and try to magnify them. These pieces were all inspired by mob swings. And although I was able to attain the subtlety I was looking for, there was still some feeling of nature missing. Most of you will probably be familiar with this site. It's fungus. We have a lot of it here. Um, finding this beautiful fungi really inspired me to create a whole new technique as well as a whole new series of work. I also have been frustrated over the years um, with the rigidity of glass as a material and how do you try and bring that to life. I was simultaneously looking at a lot of underwater photography. So I started introducing bellies, haunches, spines, butts, <laughs> and these ruffs, and they began to merge together and create these little earth sea creatures. Spikes, hackles. Something in these pieces started to happen that really brought them to life. I'm continually looking at others' images of nature and the images of nature all around me, whether that's here or Vancouver, BC, wherever I am, I'm looking at it. This is snow caught in a spider's web from a couple winters back. As I look at these images, I try and merge them together to create fluidity, contrast, stillness, connection, and the bright vitality that is life. Are you familiar with these gentlemen? Probably most of you are. Um, something unintentional or unexpected suddenly came into my work. As I was intentionally placing every tiny grain of glass across the surface of my mold, it occurred to me that I was having this experience. My mind was empty, meditative, totally focused, creating these small reflections of the beauty I saw around me. My focus is on the love I have for this world. I see how things in nature grow into and around each other as we do, with each other and with nature. And in the end, it's how we find our place in the world. Thank you.